All right, well, let's move on right now. You know, at the top of your ballot this November, of course, will be the presidential race, but scan down the ballot, and there are a few state House races that are getting interesting here and could swing based on what happens to the top of the ticket. Where are we now when looking at the presidential race involving Michigan? Um, the president, they're do he's doing two-minute ads that are running in seven key battleground states. Michigan is not one of not them. Michigan, is yeah. that basically the telltale sign that he believes he's course, pretty much yeah. done here and that could really affect the rest yeah. of the ticket. And Romney's not doing a whole lot of spending here either. If Romney were to come in here and start spending again, it would force the president's hand, I believe. And that may happen because there is a lot of concern that if these polls we've been seeing right are right, that the president has a double digit plus lead here. Uh, it can really impact races down the ticket. As we saw in 2008, Republicans got washed out um, right down to the county commission races. And in 2010, when you had a huge Republican surge, it wiped Democrats out who right. were in extraordinarily safe seats. So right now, Michigan Republicans are worried if the presidential race gets away from them here. They're worried about the Supreme Court because that's a, uh, you know, a very important uh, race for them. They're worried about state house races uh, and they're worried all all down. Education boards at the universities and state board of ed. It has an impact on those races where people don't really know the candidates all that well. Could we see some impact? Are, are we seeing some state races that could now flip to where it would seem unheard of? You've got Republican, you know, generally historically Republican seats that could now go Democrat. And how could that affect the entire makeup of the House legislature? Well, I think, um, you know, the big thing for, for Republicans right now is holding on to the state house. Uh, here, I, I think they do that. I think uh, the, the way the map's drawn is really. I mean, you're talking about a huge landslide uh, to, to to get to get them out of control. There, maybe they lose maybe they lose some seats that that they shouldn't have. Uh, the the bigger concern, I think, is is in Congress, where uh, I think they almost certainly lose the first. Uh, because that was sort of a Democratic district anyway, uh, but but the the Grand Rapids district, uh, I think, it would be the the next one to fall. Uh, it would if, have to be if, a huge uh, landslide. It would have to be a very to, big landslide. Well, I'm not so sure about the first. That's still a very close race. But if it widens, you know, and if it, yeah, this, no, I think if that this, if lead holds up, I'm not sure, you know. Whether that lead is accurate or not, but if it's if it is and it holds up, yeah, Benishek will have a hard. Well, I mean time that that district went Republican after having been in Democratic hands for uh, I don't know uh -huh. how long, and uh, it's still not really a Republican uh, district, even right. with the redraw. They tried to help it out as much. Right. There's only so many Republicans you can get in, in that the part of the world. Yeah. Right. Let's talk about a state Supreme Court race mm -hmm. and the fact that we're starting to see the adverti advertisements really heat up, but it is so far down on the ballot, and it's on the nonpartisan part yeah. of the ballot. That might still be baffling to people that yeah. you have candidates who are nominated by a party, but <clears throat> yet it's on the nonpartisan part of the well, ballot. You know, voting really falls off when you get to that point of a ballot, particularly in a ballot this size. This thing is going to it's be a huge. huge ballot. It's, it's two it's pages be, in Wayne County. Yeah, two pages. You're going to go in there. And, it, and you know, the, the first challenge is to get people to stay with it and keep voting. And the second challenge is to sell your candidate. Now, you have two incumbents on the ballot. They'll carry the incumbent designation. Very unusual for them to lose. Uh, but then you've got an open seat that uh, rep uh, the Republicans would very much like to grab and Democrats would like to hang on to. Yeah, well, and, and we saw in 2008, you know, uh, uh, Cliff Taylor was not just an incumbent, but was the chief justice and, mm -hmm. and got washed out because mm -hmm. of the margin, in, at least in yeah. part, because of the margin that Barack Obama had. I, you know, we haven't really started to see uh, a lot of the advertising that we're going to see in the Supreme Court race because most of it will come from third parties. Uh, the candidates themselves will, will do a little, but mm -hmm. you're going to have this blitz in October uh, yeah. in that race that should make it really interesting. It's going to get very nasty. Yes. I mean, what right. we've seen now is the touchy-feely, oh, gosh, look, at there's, there's children and puppies, and we all love them. Yeah. When this race <laughs> is going to get... You remember the 2008 yes. race. This thing yeah, is that's good. right. These, have the potential to get very, very ugly. Well, let me ask you guys, because you are going in now to the process of doing your endorsements. Mm -hmm. How do you vet these Supreme Court candidates? Oh, we just flip a coin. No. <laughs> it's just that easy. It's just that easy, folks. <laughs> right. Just that easy. No questions. I mean, you... you, you now, you, seriously, give people a little bit of insight I, of what these, you... These aren't unknown quantities to us. We know most of the candidates. I mean, on our side of, of, of the philosophical aisle, we're looking for... for judges who will 
uphold the state constitution, not overstep their role, not try to define themselves as policy makers. Yeah, I, well, I mean, we're looking for the same thing. I think the difference would be that that uh, the, the Republican majority on the court, uh, in our eyes, would be the ones who've, who've overstepped uh, the, the, the court's authority and uh, tend to abuse the idea of the, of the rule of law and, and uh, favor policy positions sometimes rather than, mm. rather than just in I don't see how statute. you can look at, Steve, at, at the rulings they made, for example, in the ballot proposals and say that. Those are exceptions. I, I don't think they were exceptions at all. I think if you look at this court, you look they've at been, they have not been meddlesome in areas where they don't belong. What they have been is an effective stop to the Ingham County Circuit Court, which thinks it owns the state. Well, I mean, I think this is a, this is a court that has been very uh, hard on plaintiffs' access to, to courts uh, beyond what statute requires in this state. Uh, uh, they have been very friendly to business interests. They're, 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 there's a thumb on the scale aspect to the way that they decide some of these cases uh, that suggests that it's about politics and not the law. And the bottom line. Not owned by the plaintiffs. Well, and the bottom line is it's, it's a very important position Position that I think sometimes when people think about elections and voting, they're not all of a sudden quite thinking about Supreme Court. So make sure you go down your ballot, yeah. research the candidates. And we've got good and ca you know, the thing is, we have really good candidates uh, from both parties uh, this time. Uh, a, a pretty broad uh, spectrum. You've got a University of Michigan law professor. When's the last time you had uh, an a, a legal intellectual rather than a, a practicing judge or lawyer Steve on the court? Markman would, be uh, Markman would, that, would yeah. fall in that. All right. Well, we look forward to seeing your endorsements uh, a little later on this fall. You know, Oakland County Executive Brooks Patterson is still recovering from a serious car accident that happened seven weeks ago. But now Democrats are calling for Patterson to show himself so voters know who they are are voting for. Now, Patterson has been in a private rehab facility, says he plans to be back in the office soon and has not given interviews, but Nolan just met with him and has an, had an interview yeah. with him. How is Brooks doing? Brooks, first off? Doing. Brooks is doing well, considering what he's been through. Uh, I went out and talked to him yesterday afternoon. He was, he, you know, he appeared strong. He appeared on his way to a full recovery here. He's, you know, again, this was He's busted up. He was busted up, but the cast are off his arm. He's in soft casts on his legs now instead of the hard cast. He's still in a wheelchair, but he's doing four hours of therapy a day. He hopes to be back in the office in a couple of weeks. That may be ambitious, but he's going to be back in the office, and he is meeting um, every day with his deputies. He was fully versed on what's been going on in the county. He was very conversant in the latest developments in the county. And if I were the Oakland County Democrats, I'd be careful what I wish for because having, Brooks. Yeah, having Brooks on the <laughs> sideline might be their best uh, hope they have. Now, before we talk about the Democrats and what their strategy has been, I have to ask you, what was his response to why he wasn't wearing a seatbelt? Well, he says, happened? yeah, no, and I asked him that, and he says, you know, he was an intermittent seatbelt um, where he said, what does that mean? well, that's it. he said it. <laughs> sometimes on, you do, sometimes you don't, but you should wear it all yeah, the time. He said on short trips, sometimes they didn't wear them on longer trips, which is, of course, absolutely crazy. You never know when, uh, you know, the axe is going to fall. But uh, you know, he called himself now the new poster boy for seatbelts, and he figured he'd give everybody on his staff a personalized seatbelt for Christmas. There you go. All right, so Stephen, so where is the fine line that the Democrats are walking on right now? And pushing somebody to, to come out in public who has been in an accident like that. Um, where do you get the fine line of voters really need to know and maybe being a little bullish? Yeah, no, I think, I think that we're over that line uh, right now. The Democrats have fallen right yeah, over it? I think, I think this, this falls pretty squarely in the, in the category of, of bad taste and, and politiz politicization of uh, something that, that's not political. I mean, the guy was in a car wreck and, and, and he's hurt. You should just say, look, do what you got to do to get to get better and get back to work. I, I think, uh, you know, um, you know, obviously somebody of, at, at his age with those kinds of, of injuries, it's going to take a little while for him mm -hmm. to get back on his feet. I think you give him that space and 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 don't try to say somehow that uh, there's an advantage we can get by by forcing him to to come out or, or something or thinking that somehow you get an advantage at the ballot box in November with the, the I, well, I was just gonna, I was just going to ask do Democrats gain a little bit here or do they then actually lose a little ground I think Brooks could win from the grave in, <clears throat> excuse me in this race but 
you know, the Oakland County benefits from the fact that it has had a good CEO in charge. Brooks mm -hmm. has put together a tremendous team um, it, 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 who fully capable of taking their pieces of the responsibility and running with it without having him over their shoulder all the time. I doubt you, that the citizens in Oakland County have noticed any difference in the way that. Well, uh, all right, you know, and Brooks, Brooks wins uh, in, the, in, in these races, even, I mean, if you think about it, 2008 uh, was a washout for, 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 Demo uh, for Republicans in, in Michigan. Brooks wasn't even close to 25 points. Yeah, well, the, ele the, uh, the election is still on, and, and of course, we wish, wish Brooks well. Well, a new documentary called Burn is opening this weekend in Detroit. It follows Detroit firefighters for a year and won an award at the Tribeca Film Festival. Here's a look for you at the trailer. Engine! Engine! I wish my head could forget what my eyes have seen. Close your eye, feel heat all around you, and that's fear. You know, you tackling this thing like it's some type of drag, and we don't really lose too often. Yeah, you knocked on that door yet? There's some buildings you realize that's designed to kill firemen. Do you put your life up as collateral for another life? You don't know what life saving is about. The roof is going up and they're often more afraid of death or crippling injury. I always thought he was kind of, like, invincible. Somebody didn't do their job. Trust me, I'm going to do what I think is right. We better get back in charge of our own damn department. And here we go. And going from a city of 1.8 million to 700,000. As long as there's people leaving, as long as there's vacant houses, there's more things to burn. I can't picture another city that's like this where so many of the fires are arson. It's beyond me why people would want to burn their own city down. I mean, this has been Katrina without the hurricane. Today is the last day that I will be standing in this uniform for the Detroit Fire Department. This is where I live. This is where I fight my fires. This city is, is too great. It's too much history. We the baddest guys in Michigan. This is my family. Yes. How do you not do something for the people that are around you? Wow, it's at the Fillmore this weekend, Friday and Saturday. If you want to know for more information, go to our website, myweek.org. We'll have some more info for you. It's pretty powerful stuff in just about a minute 30, huh? Yeah, yeah. I, you know, one of the things I like about the idea of this film is that it's about something real here in Detroit. I mean, I think one of the things, one of the problems we have uh, with the current narrative in the city is is that we make a lot of stuff out of, out of things that are not, uh, uh, don't have the kind of impact on, on real people who live in the city that, that, that this does. I mean, this is really about how we keep people safe. Yeah. Uh,